the guest star, Shirley Jones. And now, here's your host, Larry Blood. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome to Personality. Good morning. Good morning, Jack. Good morning. I can't handle those heavy jackets, right? No. Well, this is a little old hand-me-down. A friend of mine gave me this jacket. I doubt if he was your friend. Good looking. Oh, he was a terrific friend. Looks very cheap. Give it to me with a pocket full of change. Oh, leave that change alone. <laughs> Who are you playing for today, Jack? I'm playing for my tailor. Okay. Uh, I bet no, you I'm... are. <laughs> I'm playing for Miss Pearl Schmidt, who's in Seguin. When they Seguin. Texas. Okay. Joan, how's that show doing? My show's doing very well, thank you. How many uh, stations are you on I now? think we're in 28 stations now, which that's is great. That's terrific. They canceled us in Tulsa, but that's Tulsa's loss. <laughs> but we picked up L.A., so puff, puff. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. Uh, I just want to say the jacket doesn't look sleazy on you. Oh. Uh, it's, I'm playing for Mrs. <laughs> You looked very handsome in it yesterday, Jack. And I'm still playing for Mrs. F. Lee Marsh. That's Mrs. Flea Marsh. Mrs. Flea Marsh in Cholula Vista? That's Ch it. Chula Vista, California, which is right near Puff Puff, L.A. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Larry. And who are you playing for today? Uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, no, I'm playing for Mrs. Helen La Salandra of East Providence, Rhode Island. And I'd like to also slip in a word about the fine time I had when I was on Joan's show, yeah. and we did a Chinese food demonstration. Boy, that was great. And in fact, I, got, I hadn't had time to eat before I got to the show. Yeah. And I thought that we were going to do a thing about Chinese cookies. And when I got there, it said Chinese cooking. Yeah. So I uh, just wanted the folks at home to know that. He was insane. Well, they both were on, you all been on my show. It's yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's right we'll all go back. In a moment, we'll find out what Joan Rivers has given up on. Given up on. Given on up what on. has Joan Rivers given up? Gator I don't know. Mink Coast. How Flip Wilson would like to come back if reincarnation were possible. And what Jack Cassidy believes is the greatest advantage the male sex has over the female sex. But first, this message of special interest. And line the outside walls with it so it would be warmer. Panel, each correct answer is worth $25 to the person you represent. And high score for the day wins them a fabulous vacation trip for two. So, let's see how well you know each other. We asked Joan Rivers this question. Is there anything about yourself that you've given up on? And she said, I can't keep a secret. I have to tell at least one other person, otherwise what's the good of knowing the secret? Or she said, I can't sing. I took lessons and the singing teacher gave me the money back. <laughs> or she said, I've given up on changing my image. You can take the girl out of Brooklyn, but Flip? Take the... Okay, uh, uh, uh. let's see. Given up on changing my image, I can't see where there would be, uh, why Joan might give any thought to changing her image. It's a very charming, very, very lovable person. He is our Rickles. And I can't sing. I don't think singing would have represented a problem because she has such a great sense of humor. So I'll have to go along with, I can't keep a secret. I don't think Joan will keep a secret. All right, Jack, you think she can keep a secret? She can. She can. <laughs> uh, she's kept one of the biggest ones here in town. Has she really? Quiet, darling. <laughs> <laughs> they just told it. See that? I told you she couldn't keep a secret. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that Joan would say I can't sing. She has a super voice. Sounds a lot like Dick Ames, but <laughs> look at that, how quickly he's forgotten. <sighs> <sighs> Can we chip in and get rid of this crowd? <laughs> I think she said I can't sing. I took lessons and the singing teacher gave me the money back. All right, let's find out what Joan has given up on. Joan? Yes, uh, the thing I've absolutely given up that I just cannot do is... Uh, I can't sing. I took lessons, and the singing teacher gave me the money back. You owe me an honest singing teacher, and I'll show you a good dance director. <laughs> Did you really? And they gave you the money back? No, no, no. And actually, I'm coming along very nicely. I'm on uh, tour Laura Laura now, which is the... Is that the name of your teacher? <laughs> <laughs> 
cost me a thousand dollars to sing Tura Lura Lura, but you never know when someone might request. No, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I travel in I circles. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I cheated a little. See, I went back to a few weeks ago. I heard Joan say on the show that she couldn't keep a secret, yeah. and that flashed back in yes. my mind. That's why I said that. I can't keep a secret. Can I get twelve dollars on that? <laughs> <laughs> you can sit on one of the lessons if you want to. I sang Tura Lura Lura to an old German audience once. It really went over big. <laughs> Moving swiftly ahead. Go ahead. Larry. <laughs> okay, we, we asked Jack. What is the greatest advantage the male sex has over the female sex? And Jack said, for a man, the end of a love affair is not the end of the world. For a woman, it's a catastrophe. Or he said, uh, he? the biggest advantage a man has over a woman is the sheer luxury of going into a bar and sitting at it and drinking. Or he said, a man gains his biggest advantage on the day that he's born. It's called superior intellect. <laughs> Sound a lot like Bob Horn, don't I? Joan, would you like to mess around with that one? What are you hissing me for? You don't know what I said yet. <laughs> now, he could have said all three of these. Well, there's one he couldn't have said that I know of. Well, he was but going to a bar and drinking? I won't Superior tell. intellect? I no, won't tell no. till you're off in it. I think he said for a man, the end of a love affair is not the end of the world. You know, the way for a woman it is. That's what all those guys in that bar are doing, belting them back, though, most of them. It's a catastrophe. She is a mother. Well, in this case, uh, I'll have to go along with Jack uh, in my belief that uh, our, our ego is thing. I don't have to say that Jack said the biggest advantage is the day he's born, and it's called a superior intellect. I believe so much in the superiority of the male. <laughs> Absolutely right, Cliff. I mean, you're absolutely right about that. Let's see what Jack says is the greatest advantage the male sex has over the female sex. Hit it, Jack, you poor devil. Well, I think... I hope so. The <laughs> biggest advantage a man has over a woman is the sheer luxury of going into a bar and sitting at it and drinking. Nobody stops a woman from going to a bar. Well, there's a lot of bars that can't. Yeah, but you really can't do it without getting an offer. So? <laughs> That's a luxury of being a woman, Jack. <laughs> Certainly have puffed your way right through the show, haven't you, sweetheart? Puffed my way through the show. Huh? What, Cliff? What, Your Majesty? Uh, I don't have any comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we asked Cliff, if reincarnation were possible, how would you want to come back? And he said, in my next life, for a change, I'd like to be a fantastic-looking broad. That's he is, he is. He is, he is. Or he said, I would want to return as a horse, because a horse is strong and gentle. Or he said, I'd like to come back as a dictator, the man in charge. Jack? What? What is it? It's my turn, gang. You'll be up in a minute. A horse is a... Is strong and gentle? Yeah. yeah they're dummies. They're dummies and strong and they kick people. And they're tough to saddle, too. Would you like to be saddled? <laughs> ah, the devil with it. <laughs> um, I think he'd probably say I'd like to come back as a horse because they're strong and gentile. Jones says Gentile. No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever ridden a Jewish horse? <laughs> <laughs> they go next. next. Uh, in my next, I think, <laughs> I think he said, and this is no reflection on you, Mr. Superior, but uh, I think he said, and he's right, because women have all the advantages over being a man, and he'd like to come back as a woman, as long as you're a fantastic looking woman. Yes. Let's find out how Flip would like to fantastic come woman. back. <clears throat> no, huh? Oh, you know he said dictator. I would want to return as a horse because a horse is strong and gentle. You're also never out of the hay flip, which is a break. <laughs> you better say that one again. I said you're also never out of the hay flip, which is a break. <laughs> You're also away. never out of the hay. Right. And we'll find out how well you judge your own public image right after this word of interest. Breath was so bad, she'd get the windmills going on an old Dutch painting. <laughs> <laughs> then, 
Uh, what? There's another one that I like that says, you don't have to try to remember what you said if you're telling the truth. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. What'd he say? <laughs> okay, now, let's Welcome see how well you know your own public image. We asked 300 people this question about Joan. If they named cars after famous celebrities, which car would Joan Rivers choose? The Burton, an English import, rich and impressive, or the Mastroian, Mastroianni, an Italian sports car, flashy, fast, and dangerous, or would it be the Lawrence Welk, well-built and square? <laughs> Flip? Uh, no Tin Lizzie on there. Nope. <laughs> <coughs> they got a Burton instead. Well the, well, the Tin Lizzie, well, you know, you follow, the Tin Lizzie would be the light. It was always a warm, pleasant feeling to see the little Tin Lizzie on there. They don't have one. The Burton, the English import, rich and impressive. No, that wouldn't be Joan. The, uh, yeah, the one of them would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, it's sports car, flashy, fast, and dangerous. Okay. That it? Yes. That's it. <clears throat> Jack, yes. which one? No mention of the Hupmobile on there with a the tulip kit. <laughs> Pierce's. No, no Pierce arrow. I think the crowd really sees Joan as a, an Italian sports car, yes. flashy, fast, and yes. dangerous. And Joan is winking. I'm the Lawrence Welk, you know it. No, you're not. Lawrence, Lawrence Welk, Welk, you pick? They the majority pick of the people thought Joan Rivers would choose the Burton, an English import, rich and impressive. Yeah. I'm back on. No. What's the husband's English? We asked 300 people this question yeah. about Flip. How do you think Flip Wilson got the nickname of Flip? Because he flipped coins with the kids on the corner? Or because he won a diving championship with a great backflip? Or was it because he flipped his lid over a beautiful girl? Jack? Flipped his lid over a beautiful girl, I Joan? Say. No, this is what 300 people think. Yeah. Because he flipped coins with the kids on the corner when he was cutting school. Flip? Because I flipped coins with the kids on the corner. A two-headed coin. Two-headed coin. How did you get the name Flip? How did it? Yeah. How did I? For my buddies in the service. Really? Yes, we'd flip coins behind the barracks. You really did? No, it was my buddies in the service. They thought I was a little off my cookie. Oh, I see. <laughs> the majority of the people thought Flip Wilson got the nickname Flip because he flipped coins with the kids on the corner. We're back to get to know with Shirley Jones, the first this world in. A name like Leroy or Freddie. Freddie. Something like that. Leroy. Okay, panel, let's see how well you know Shirley Jones, who is a pretty girl on a bad day. We asked Shirley Jones, what kind of person were you before you got married? And she said, I was rather naive. And when you marry a man like Jack Cassidy, you grow up pretty fast. <laughs> or she said, before I was married, I played the field. I didn't want a deep involvement with anyone who would interfere with my career. Or she said, I was desperate to get married and made up my mind to accept the first man who proposed. And it happened to be Jack. <laughs> Jones? I'll buy that. Uh, you know Shirley at all? I surely was on my show. I met her once, so I really don't know if she's kidding around. She's serious now, but um, I think she would say I was rather naive when you marry a man like Jack Cassidy. Ah, oh, you grow up pretty fast. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go along with that 100 percent. Yeah, both of you feel that. Yes. Yes. Jack, what did Shirley say? Well, I happen to know that she said when you marry a chap like whatever his name is because Shirley was only about two feet high when I married her, and she shot up to five feet within a month. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. I used to call her Munchkin years ago. Yeah. There's a question I was going to ask you, but I'll say I it. think that's probably what she said. Look at how pretty she is. And there's a good shot of me in the background. Did you see it? Yes, I do. <laughs> so, let's find out what kind of girl Shirley Jones was before she got married. Good well, I was married at a very, I guess, young age, and um, I was rather naive, small town girl. Uh, and when you marry a man like Jack Cassidy, you grow up pretty fast. <laughs> that was the other answer I wrote for her. All right. <laughs> We asked Shirley Jones this question. What's the best way to keep a man interested? And Shirley said, to keep a man interested is to keep him guessing. Or she said, 
The only way to keep a man interested is to let him run the show. Or she said, the best way to keep a man interested is to buy some seductive lingerie. Flip? Okay. Where is it? Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to that last question, the last statement, which was uh, correct. And I don't have to say that to keep a man interested. Uh, uh, the only way to keep a man interested is to let him run the show, based on uh, the last statement made. The last answer. Yes. Jack? Well, I, I haven't seen any of Shirley's seductive lingerie lately. <laughs> she wears an old striped bathing suit around the house. <laughs> One of those pullover jobs. Uh, <laughs> Sounds terrific so far. <laughs> There's a lot of Marjorie Maine in Shirley. Actually, uh... <laughs> I guess she'd say, and I don't know why, she must have been drinking seductive lingerie. You poor fool. <laughs> really? You think that's what she said? I think she wanted to be naughty and nippy that day. <laughs> John, do you think she thinks that? No, I think, um, again, because Jack is a very vibrant, dominant egomaniac. Oh. <laughs> vibrant? <laughs> Dominant ego me. <laughs> that if you want to keep him around as a husband, you let him run the show. Um, let's find out what Shirley Jones thinks is the best way to keep a man interested. Best way to keep a man interested is to buy some seductive lingerie. <laughs> There goes the stock on Polaroid. <laughs> <laughs> I would have sworn you were wrong, but you must know something. We'll get to the last question we asked Shirley Jones in a minute. But I first, doubt that. this word of interest. How to be... Tension bargain shoppers, get ready for a real deal. It's The Price is Right with Bob Barker, seven days a week at 9 a.m. Eastern, only on Game Show Network. My house. They got the wrong Jones. Got the wrong it's Jones. The worst she does have a lot of people. Room right there, what they just shot. The worst part of it? Sure. They picked that out? You got a terrific fireplace here. I wonder why they didn't get some nice of Nice dried leaves. Actually. How many kids do you all have, Jack? Four boys. Four boys. That's How many more? Say, my son got a... What? Well, yeah. My son David just got the lead in an iron side. No kidding. Oh. That's terrific. Yeah. Last, first time I ever saw David, he was about that big. You know, he had to be changed. We had to go home from the basketball court. He still, uh, he still isn't much taller. Okay, we asked Shirley Jones this last question. What is guaranteed to do something for your ego? And she said, when somebody you respect comes backstage and says, that was a brilliant performance, that was beautifully done. Or she said, my biggest ego booster is cooking a meal and having someone ask for the recipe. Or she said, the greatest thing for my ego is for Jack to step aside and let me use the mirror. <laughs> Jack, let's start with you this time. <laughs> why, why did you say that, Shirley? <laughs> well, she's right about that mirror. Uh, I guess cooking a meal, and I'm always asking for her recipes, and she won't give them to me. <laughs> Joan? I think um, Shirley's a very good actress, and very serious, I imagine, about her work. You know, when the home life isn't so good, we concentrate on other things. <laughs> and I say, the problem is she said, with somebody you respect backstage, because it makes you feel great, because actually that was a great performance. It was beautifully done. It's a shame your makeup was sloppy. Wasn't there a mirror around? Who says that? But has Shirley ever done nightclubs? Yes, yes. Sure. Did you have an act together that you Yes, do? but she's done, a, done clubs alone. Flip, what do you think? Let's see. Boy, that, uh... I'm gonna have to go along in this instance with the, uh, cooking. I, I can dig very much when somebody you respect comes backstage and says that was a brilliant performance. That should be very, very gratifying. And, uh, I'd like to go for the laugh thing there about Jack not giving up the mirror, you know? <laughs> yeah. But Shirley threw me a curve on that other one before, yeah. so I'm not gonna let that happen. I'm gonna go with the logic and say my biggest booster is cooking a meal and having someone ask for the recipe. Let's find out what is guaranteed to do something for Shirley Jones' ego. Well, I guess for any actress, uh... What? The most marvelous, uh... ego-building thing is when... 
after a performance, somebody that you respect comes backstage or comes on the set and says, that was a brilliant performance, Shirley. That was beautifully done. I always go backstage and tell her there was a brilliant performance. Anything to get a good meal out of her. <laughs> but not the recipe. Not the recipe. I love it when they come back afterwards and say to you something like, well, you did it again. Yeah. I had one that came back and <laughs> yes. said, well, what can I say? <laughs> In a moment, we'll return with a big winner for today, but first, this message of special interest. <laughs> ah, so Jack Cassidy with a high score of $100 wins for today. Smith, this fabulous ride, Bill. You're Jack for a week's vacation for two at Bluebeard's Castle and Bluebeard's Beach Hotels overlooking Charlotte Amelie Harbor. Enjoy swimming at the pool or ocean beach and continental cuisine. Congratulations. And we'll see you tomorrow and the rest of the week and we'll be trying to judge the opinions of some of these famous stars. John Forsythe, Barbara McNair, Shelley Berman, Inger Stevens, and... Jim Backus. Okay, thank you, Bill. Thank you, panel. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, here and at home for being with us on Personality. And so long, Mr. Schmidt. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. This is Bill Wonder speaking. This program is to the Bill. Thank you for having a good day. I'm Peter Marshall.